Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Plexico Burris was introduced to the game of football by his late mother, Miss Vicky Burris. In hindsight, the story of how it all happened kind of feels like fate. When Plexico was around seven years old, his mom randomly invited him to come and take a ride. Plexico asks, mom, where we going? She responds, don't worry about it, get in the back seat. They pull up to an open field and his mom drops him off and tells him she'll be back. Plexico hops out the car, turns around and there's tons of kids playing football. But at this point in his life, Plaxico had never played before. And by the time she came to pick him up a few hours later, Plaxico's love for the game had been sparked. And that spark would eventually grow into a flame that would one day burn bright on the game's largest stage. But unbeknownst to them, a series of events building up to a self-inflicted gunshot wound would threaten to extinguish the flame on Plaxico's career once and for all. This is what happened to Plaxico Burris. Cue the way. Alright, real quick before we jump in, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is the global leader in men's grooming and hygiene. They created the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit and is literally got you covered from head to toe. Now, Manscaped is a regular sponsor on the channel and I've been using this Lawnmower 3.0 for a while now. A1 premium product, skin safe tech, LED light for added precision, yeah, it's the one. Now, this is included in the Perfect Package 3.0 that also includes ball deodorant and ball toner. These right here will keep you fresh throughout the night. And with Valentine's Day right around the corner, these could come in clutch. Now to make sure we seal the deal with the final piece. Manscaped's new refined cologne is nice and subtle and when she get close, the masculine scent gonna get the job done. So if your girl looking for the ultimate gift for him this year, why not tell her to grab a gift that'll benefit you and her? Yo, if you're interested, be sure to click the link in the description. That's going to save you 20% off and get you free shipping on your order. Shout out to Manscaped once again for sponsoring the video. Without further ado, let's get it. Plaxico Burris saw a lot as a kid. When dude was growing up, shootings were relatively common in his neighborhood. An incident like the one that would threaten to end Plaxico's career one day probably wouldn't even make the paper in this town. Around the age of 12, Plexico started to feel the need to have a gun for protection, but he was obviously too young to own one. But he made a promise to himself that as soon as he was old enough to purchase one legally, he would. Plexico started high school as a two-sport athlete, but as a tall, kind of skinny kid, he saw himself gravitate more towards basketball during his early high school days. His football coach at the time actually begged him not to quit. He told him he was making a huge mistake, but he didn't tell him why for some reason. So after his freshman season, Plaxico walked away from football with no intentions of going back. The following year when Plaxico was a sophomore, dude ended up in ISS, in school suspension on the first day of school or detention whatever y'all call it. So unfortunately for Plax, nobody even got to see that first day of school outfit that I'm sure he had so meticulously put together. Making matters even worse, the football coach he just quit on was supervising detention that day. Great. The coach walks over to Plaxico's desk, drop a big ass crate on the ground. Boom. Plaxico probably thought it was full of busy work or you know, whatever the stuff is they give you in detention just to keep you doing something. What it actually was, Recruitment letters, full of recruitment letters. Apparently, colleges from all over wanted to give dude a scholarship to come play the sport that he had just quit. By his senior year, Plaxico was the top rated receiver in the country and ready to go ball on the college level but a 1.9 GPA said otherwise. Plaxico had never cared much for school because he didn't see a realistic future in it. Something that's very underestimated by people who didn't grow up in these areas is this. When you're a kid and all the adults you see work jobs that you do not want to work. They live a lifestyle filled with struggles and not having. That's just not something that you're gonna aspire to. So no matter how many times you hear, go to college, get your education, a lot of times it's just not gonna register because you don't see the result at the end as something that you even want. So why go through all of this? But something happened during Plaxico's senior year that completely changed his perspective. Dude took a recruiting trip to watch the Florida Gators take on a Peyton Manning-led Tennessee team. And what Plaxico saw that day 
changed the entire course of his life. He was finally getting a look beyond the tough environment he had grown up in. For the first time, he saw a glimpse of that light at the end of the tunnel. And that one trip provided all the motivation he needed to get things right. So he goes back to school and immediately, for the first time in his life, dude makes the honor roll crazy what some added perspective can do. So Plaxico was able to get his grades up and that should have been enough to punch his ticket into college. But unfortunately, he failed the SAT back to square one. It was at this point that Plaxico's uncle stepped up huge and literally mortgaged his future by taking out a second mortgage on his home to pay for Plaxico to go to prep school for a year. The gamble paid off as Plaxico got qualified for college. And despite all of the big offers he had, Dude ended up going to Michigan State, a school he chose because he instantly clicked with some of the other recruits he met. And when you first think about it, that might not feel like the best reason to pick a college. But till this very day, those dudes are his close friends and he says they talk still a couple times a week. Plaxico was dominant during his short college career. In his first season, he caught 65 passes for 1,013 yards and 8 touchdowns. He followed that up the next year with a 66 reception season, 1,147 yards and 12 touchdowns, including a 10-catch, 255-yard game versus a Tom Brady-led Michigan team. Thanks to that one year of prep school, Plaxico was actually able to qualify for the NFL draft after only two years of college. Again, all you gotta do is be out of high school for three years, one year of prep school, two years of college, boom. Despite that, Plaxico actually thought about returning to school for a third season. He still had college goals he wanted to accomplish, but his mom had suffered an aneurysm and had been unable to work for the last year. Plaxico was living pretty good in Michigan State, but his family was back home struggling mightily. But the All-American receiver knew one surefire way to change that immediately. At the NFL Combine, Plaxico measured in at 6'5 and a half, 231 pounds, ran a 4.59 and recorded a 33-inch vertical. Now, the Steelers was interested in taking him, but he almost just completely botched this thing, man. Check this out. So this one morning, Plaxico was scheduled to work out for the Steelers around 9, 10 o'clock. And then Steelers coach Bill Cower came all the way down from Pittsburgh to meet Plaxico at Michigan State for the workout. Well, here's the thing. Plaxico has some other stuff going on and he honestly did not prioritize his workout the way he should have because his flight didn't even land in Michigan until like six that morning. So he arrives in Michigan a few hours before the workout is set to start and makes a terrible decision to catch a couple of Z's. Y'all see where this is going. Dude completely oversleeps and misses the entire workout bill cower is pissed but through some miracle the steelers decided to draft my boy eighth overall in the 2000 nfl draft plexico's rookie season wasn't exactly the smoothest in a season where he only caught 22 passes for 273 yards as a top 10 pick he also made a play that would show up on not top 10 lists for years to come Basically, dude caught a 19-yard pass over the middle in a game versus the Jaguars. Excited about his catch, the rookie hops up and spikes the ball in celebration. Only problem was, he never got touched when he was on the ground. Meaning, this was actually a live ball. Ricky mistakes. Plax bounced back the following year going over a thousand yards for the first time in his young NFL career. Finally, dude had established himself and had something to build on. But that offseason, he lost a central figure in his life, his mom. Plaxico's mom had unfortunately gotten sick and sadly passed away not too long after. As I'm sure you can imagine, this hit Plaxico hard. He actually said he lost his desire to play ball for a while after that. But, and this is in hindsight and just outside looking in, he didn't say this, but it makes you wonder. Maybe the fact that she's the one who originally ignited the spark that got him to where he is in the first place, you know, all those years ago when she dropped him off at that field. I wonder if he thought about something like that during his healing process. We'll probably never know, but what we do know is when he came back, dude came back with a vengeance. In 2002, his third season in the league, Plaxico caught 78 passes for 1,325 yards and seven touchdowns, a stat line that would stand as the absolute best in his career. But by 2004, Plax was starting to slip. He got suspended for missing a practice, he was fined for throwing a ball in the stands, and he even got fined for, quote, slapping a referee in the face. I'm like 99% sure this one never happened, but the reports are out there. Like, if that happened, 
where's the footage like i gotta see the footage of that and i can't find it i look so while yes that report is out there I don't really know where the hell that came from, but he did get in some trouble for getting into a verbal altercation with a referee during a game, just a normal NFL player type of deal. In 2005, he signed with the Giants and made an immediate impact in that first year. Plaxico matched with Eli Manning, and the two became one of the best quarterback wide receiver duos in the league. They were one of those early duos that really perfected the back shoulder fade. They had perfect timing on it, and when it's done right, bro, it can't be stopped. Now, going into the 2007 season, a season that would forever change Plaxico's career, dude was coming off surgery for bone spurs in his left ankle. So in training camp, what ends up happening is he overcompensates and puts all that weight on his right leg. If you ever dealt with these leg injuries, you already know what's coming next. Of course, he hurts his right foot. He ended up playing through the pain and torched the Dallas Cowboys in the first game of the season. Eight grabs, 144 yards, and three touchdowns. He was on two bad wheels, but still rolling. But the following game, he ends up hurting that right foot even more. This time he says he hurt the bone in that thing just crunch. So the doctor takes a look at it and tells Plax this, you basically got three options. One, we can put you in the cast for eight weeks. Issue is when you come out of the cast, that leg's probably gonna be way too weak for you to go out and perform, so you're still not gonna come back this season. Another option was for the doctor to re-break the foot so that it could heal properly, which Plaxico really wasn't trying to do that. But there was one more choice, and if this was like an RPG video game, this is the only choice that's gonna actually lead you to the Super Bowl. Any of these other two, your career goes somewhere else, right? So choice three was simple. Depending on how much pain Plaxico could actually tolerate, he could just play through it. Wait until the off season, have surgery then. Obviously that's what he picked. Now I want you to keep in mind, he was already hurt and then this big injury happens in week two. So the pain that he's gonna be playing with is for the whole season, including the playoffs, all right? It ain't like he hurt it in week 15, you know what I'm saying? So the way he dealt with it is this, do it in practice all season. On Sundays, he'd suit up, go out there, ball. Sit the whole week, Sunday, ball all year he actually ended up having one of his best seasons with 70 catches for over 1000 yards and 12 tds and he did it all on a pair of faulty tires that's some real life warrior shit right there like respect it's crazy because plaxico had to keep his injuries under wraps even most of his teammates didn't know why he wasn't practicing all year and assumed he was just getting some type of preferential treatment and it's funny because having this information now made me look back on that season in a completely different way like with new eyes you know what i'm saying once they got to the playoffs though plax wasn't making much of an impact at least on the stat sheet but that all changed in the nfc championship game when dude caught 13 passes for 151 yards helping the giants to an overtime victory versus green bay consequently the same team he'd injured his foot against earlier in the season then it was on the super bowl 42 plaxico had a quiet game but stayed engaged throughout Trailing 10 to 14 with 39 seconds left in the fourth quarter of the biggest game of his life, Plaxico hits Patriots corner Ellis Hobbs with a subtle move and shakes dude out of his cleats. Eli hits him in the end zone for the Super Bowl winning touchdown, forever etching Plaxico's name in Giants history. Plaxico had finally reached the pinnacle, but he wouldn't stay on top for long. Like I referenced at the beginning of the video, Plaxico had purchased a gun as soon as he was legally able to do so. By 2008, when this whole thing is about to go down, dude had been carrying for like 10 years already. But one fateful night, Plaxico made one of the biggest blunders in NFL history. On November 28, 2008, Plaxico was unable to play due to an injury. So at this point, he's really not able to be around his teammates as much as he'd like. On this particular night, they hit him up and invite him to go out. Not one to usually go out on a Friday night, Plaxico decides this time, you know what? Yeah, I'll roll, let's go. They go to the LQ nightclub in New York City. Plaxico carries his gun, as he always had. Now you gotta remember, this isn't just any NFL receiver. This is New York Giants Super Bowl winning receiver plaxico burris in new york city so he probably didn't even get patted down when he went into the club so he walks in and as always plax has his trusty glock in his waistband now choosing a glock as his handgun of choice is significant because a glock doesn't have a traditional external safety like 
The gun has safety mechanisms built in, but there's no external button or lever or latch or anything like that that will just completely lock the gun. Now again, they do have three different internal safety mechanisms, but apparently on this particular night, those were not enough to save Plaxico. As he made his way up the steps in the club, he feels the gun began to slip in his waistband. In this situation, his finely tuned reaction times didn't do him any favors, and without thinking, he quickly reaches to catch the gun, keep it from falling out his pants. This is actually the reason they make gun holsters, but yo, yo, he, he wasn't using one. So Plexico catches the gun, but when he does, it goes off. He fires a single shot that catches Plexico in his upper leg. The wound ended up actually not being too bad, but Duke could feel the blood dripping down his leg, so it was time to go. Dude had only been there for 5-10 minutes and hadn't even made it to his section yet. As a matter of fact, the club security was actually escorting him to his section when this whole thing went down. Now the good news was because it's loud and there's a whole lot of stuff going on, nobody even seemed to notice the gunshot other than Plaxico obviously and the people right around him. So he ends up leaving the club and going to the hospital. They patch him up, he goes home, and you know, really he's fine. Now the hospital was supposed to report this to the police, but for whatever reason, they did not. Plaxico was already injured, and he was already set to be out for like another six weeks. So when you couple those two things, you pretty quickly realize that, you know what, bro? He could have really just swept this under the rug and it, it didn't have to be a big deal. But eventually, whether it was through club security or somebody who worked at the hospital who maybe felt the way that they didn't follow the rules and report this, somebody let the police know. So a couple of days later, they find out. Plaxico was actually home watching TV when the New York City mayor hopped on TV and insisted on giving Plaxico the maximum punishment for criminal possession of a firearm. So when Plaxico purchased a firearm, he did register it, but he registered it in Florida. In New York City, the laws are way different than they are in places like Florida or here in Texas. Plaxico's Florida license was never gonna do him any good in this situation, not to mention the Florida license was also expired. You were slipping, Plax. You were slipping. So the New York City mayor, Mayor Bloomberg, was on TV publicly calling for Plaxico to receive extended jail time, saying Plaxico should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law for accidentally shooting his damn self. Now, using a whole full extent of the law was probably just a little bit of hyperbole, just something to sound good on TV to get people riled up. But when powerful people say stuff like that, I take it serious. So I'm like, the fullest extent of the law. Okay, what does that mean in this situation? Well, a year earlier, that same mayor pushed through a new state law that raised the penalty for illegal possession of a handgun in New York City up to a mandatory minimum of three and a half years with a maximum of 15 years, bro. So regardless to what you mean when you on TV screaming, he should be punished to the full extent of the law, that means you feel like he should get 15 years for shooting his damn self in the leg. Like, that sounds insane to me. But that's me. Answer this for yourself, and I'm actually super curious about this. What do you think the punishment should be for a crime like this? And you gotta take into account, yes, Plaxico broke the law. Yes, he deserves to be prosecuted. But when you get to talking about the full extent, it's like, okay, he broke the law, but he didn't have intent to commit any more crimes. He doesn't have a history of committing any crimes like this. Nobody ended up getting hurt in the situation other than Plaxico himself. I'm not a person who feels like NFL players or people of high influence should have leniency when it comes to these things strictly because they're an NFL player or a person of high influence. But in this particular case, it kind of felt like Plaxico's NFL status was actually playing against him. Like, dude was wanting him to get a more severe punishment because of who he was. That's the thing about it that annoys me. It's like, as humans, we are so trash at getting our emotions and egos and prejudices and biases out of the way when it comes to making these decisions and it just keeps everything as inconsistent as possible. Plaxico ended up taking a plea deal and serving two years in prison. So he goes from Super Bowl winning receiver, millionaire, all of this nice stuff to prison two years bro as basically a celebrity in jail dude had to be on 23 hour lockdown for his protection something that plaxico was extremely against he actually said the other inmates wasn't the problem he said they was cool they was all giants fans he said the only people that treated him bad while he was in there were the actual prison guards after switching prisons a few times he was able to spend less time in lockdown he said a few of the cats that was in there looked out and he never had no problems the whole time he was there 
he'll basically just tell a couple of NFL stories and Cass was basically sitting around a campfire listening to him. No actual fire, just... Both the media and fans alike got tons of laughs at Plax's expense. The mistake he made was so baffling, people seemed to look the other way on the fact that he had to do two years in prison for it. He also had a situation where Fabulous accused him of dry snitching on him and his crew, saying Plax went to the paper and brought their names up. Hopefully these two figured this out because I'm a fan of both and they're both New York legends. Plaxico denied the allegations by the way and says he's not sure where they came from. Either way, while his life, career, and millions of dollars were slipping away from Plax, his name was getting drugged through the mud. Plaxico was released from prison in 2011 with his Giants days well behind him. Dude had lost two years of his life to something stupid. He even missed the birth of his daughter while locked in a damn cell. After two years away from the game, he stepped back on the field for the other New York team the Jets. The time away had robbed him of some of his skills, but he still put together a solid campaign in his comeback season. 45 catches for 612 yards and 8 touchdowns. That was enough to earn him comeback player of the year. The next year, he reunited with the Steelers, but it was short-lived as age and injuries pushed Plax out of the game with his legacy forever altered by the incident. Oh, what could have been if he doesn't go to the club that night or just hires armed security, man. He and Eli probably continue to put up numbers and compete for Super Bowls, maybe even culminating in a Hall of Fame career. But the thing I respect about Plaxico the most is he doesn't walk around the day with that woe is me energy. He takes accountability for his actions even though many people feel his punishment was extreme. He took it on the chin and has continued to live his life. In 2017, he was hired as a coaching intern for the Cardinals and he currently does a podcast with LeVar Arrington and TJ Hushmanzada, which they launched late last year. Plaxico Burris was a special talent and he'll forever be a New York Giants legend. But one terrible slip up cost him years off his career and forever tainted his legacy. It's just unfortunate that instead of being remembered for what he was able to accomplish on the field, he'll likely instead be remembered for this one incredibly terrible slip up. The worst part about this whole thing from a football standpoint is that we probably never saw the best version of Plexico Burris. So unfortunately, all we're left with are what ifs.